Okay, so this is how you should be warping to the round table hold. Done. It's literally that easy. Now, be honest, how many of you are still dragging your cursor there manually? Instead, you just have to press triangle or Y to open the list of grace checkpoints, and then you press square or X to confirm a warp straight there. It took me way too long to discover that this was a thing. But Elden Ring is full of little quality of life things like this that are never explained, so I'm going to quickfire four more at you. For example, if you walk through a beacon of light that you've placed, the beacon will disappear. So this is an excellent way to mark that you've actually reached your destination without having to pull up your map. Next, if an enemy explodes in a burst of blue light, that means they're going to drop an item. Don't miss it. And when you do pick up an item, take note of this icon. This tells you which category of your inventory that item just went into. This will make it way easier to figure out what you just picked up. Another great way to go over your recent loot is to press L3 on the inventory menu. This will let you sort in order of acquisition and look over all of the items that you recently looted at the bottom. By default though, your inventory is sorted into vertical categories that are demarcated by these horizontal lines. For example, the bolstering materials tab organizes your flask materials, your smithing stones, and your somber smithing stones into their own sections. Every tab is like this. Now, with those quality of life tips out of the way, let's get into the big stuff. First off, how would you like to have a buff that gives you 5% extra runes? To get this, all you have to do is type in seven letters. So in the last Secrets video, I announced Secret Seekers, which is our community group. To join, enter the password SEEKERS in all caps as your first group password in your multiplayer tab, and you'll be able to identify phantoms, bloodstains, messages, and summon signs from other people in the group. Our goal is to find secrets in the game and to share them with others. And since then, you know, I can't go five minutes without finding evidence of you guys hurling yourselves off cliffs in search of secrets. I look at scenes like this, covered in blood, and you make me so proud. But since then, we've also discovered that every time someone in the group defeats a shard bearer or becomes Elden Lord, everyone else in the group receives a 5% buff to their rune acquisition. And, you know, considering there are thousands of you in this group, this buff activates like constantly. So join us and enjoy your free runes. Also, I put the Secret Seekers logo onto a shirt. So if you want to rep our unofficial covenant, check it out in the link below. Another way to get free runes is by duplicating your remembrances. Godrix, for example, gives 20,000 runes, and subsequent bosses give even more than that. Every major boss drops a remembrance, though the proper way to use them is to trade them in for boss items at Enya, the finger reader at Round Table Hold. And here, you'll realize that every remembrance can be traded in for multiple items, so it's possible to duplicate them at the walking mausoleums that are found throughout the game. Here's what some of our testing revealed. First, there are seven walking mausoleums in total, one in Limgrave, three in Leonia, one in the mountaintops of the giants, one in the consecrated snowfield, and the last in the deep root depths. The method of bringing down a mausoleum differs in most cases, I'll let you figure it out, but it's generally related to removing the white curse marks from their body. And it's worth finding your way up to each of these, because you can only duplicate one remembrance per mausoleum. After duplicating, that mausoleum becomes pretty obsolete. Interestingly, you don't actually need the remembrance in your inventory to duplicate it. You just have to have defeated the boss you got it from. Also, note that you cannot duplicate remembrances that you have already claimed all of the items from. And finally, make sure to use your duplications before heading into New Game Plus, because your remaining duplications won't carry over. In addition to receiving a remembrance, defeating a shard bearer will also grant you a great rune. Once acquired, you have to go to its corresponding divine tower and activate that great rune. After doing this, you can equip a great rune at a site of lost grace, with your equipped rune appearing in the top left of your screen. These great runes bestow powerful effects upon your character, though equipping the rune doesn't apply its effects. Instead, to do that you'll have to consume a rune arc. These powerful consumables are a reward for invading, doing co-op, exploring the world. They're basically like embers or humanity from previous games in the sense that it's a powerful buff that doesn't disappear until you die. 
You also get them from killing rats, just like humanities and embers from previous games. Um, the law here is that, you know, even the most valuable items in the world make their way down to the bottom of the food chain to the rats that consume the bodies of all. Every great rune does something different. Godric's, for example, increases every one of your attributes by five, which sounds low, but then you have to remember that's essentially granting you 40 extra levels for a limited time. Characters that use a wide variety of spells and scalings will benefit most from this, of course, uh, but some of the later great runes are even more powerful. But if you don't have a great rune equipped, then a rune arc will just increase your max HP by about 10%. So rune arcs aren't really worth using unless you have a great rune equipped. But remember, make use of rune arcs. Don't just let them sit wasted in your inventory, you know, next to all the other consumables that you're afraid to use. Equip them to your pouch and pop one whenever you're on a really difficult boss, because it might be this item that pushes you over the edge to victory. Renala's Great Rune is a bit of an outlier from the others. Unlike the others, it can't be equipped, and it doesn't need to be activated by a rune arc. Rather, it can be used to respec your character. Talk to Renala at Rhea Lucaria, and you'll be able to bring your character back to their starting stats with all of your previous levels ready for reinvestment. This process requires that you defeat Renala, of course, but it also requires that you have a larval tier. These are very rare. But to tell you about the location of at least one, there's a royal soldier located here in Limgrave that drops one. Be careful though, kill him and he might just be reborn anew. But Elden Ring is a long game. So as you pick up your 50th meteorite sorcery, you might start to think, yeah, maybe I wanna play a sorcerer. So respec, try something new, switch it up. It's easy to do. You just have to kill this guy for a larval tier. It's so easy, right? Another way to fix your character might be via pardoning, which, let's be honest, is a mechanic that exists for when you put down your controller and you accidentally press the R2 button in front of an NPC. Alternatively, it is also useful when giant dogs attack NPCs through walls and they get upset at you instead. So to get NPCs to forgive you, you just need to find Celestial Dew, uh, one of them is located here, for example, and then take it to this pool at the Church of Vows. In researching this, I started to wonder what this mechanic is really for, and I think I figured out it must be for the merchants, because logically, you should be killing every merchant you see, because once you kill them, you can just buy all of their items in one place, at the Twin Maiden Husks at Round Table Hold. That said, it's very traumatizing to kill a merchant. Just listen. Excuse me, it's all my fault. Please, don't hurt me. I said don't hurt me! So, if you regret this decision, ask for forgiveness, and the merchant will become friendly again. If you really do have some angst to let out, you know, don't take it out on NPCs that don't really exist. Take it out on other human beings, like a normal person. Your item for infinite invasions is the Bloody Finger, which can be acquired by progressing Vare's questline to the Rose Church. Speak to him before defeating Godric at the start of the game, and then again at the Rose Church in Leonia, located here. Here, he'll give you five festering bloody fingers for invading other players. Use three of them to progress his questline, where he will next require you to soak the Lord of Blood's favor in the blood of a maiden. One maiden exists here, in the Church of Inhibition, in Leonia. Interact with the maiden and return to Vare to receive the bloody finger. Alternatively, you can pick up the Recusant's Finger at the Volcano Manor. You get this later in the game, and this one has a different story affiliation to the invaders of the Bloody Finger that you got from Vare. But if you'd rather just engage in duels with other players, then you'll need the Duelist's Furled Finger, which can be found on a corpse at the doors of Stormhill Colosseum. The small red effigy can also be found here, and it serves the same purpose, except it sends a competitive summon sign to the summoning pool instead. Summoning pools are accessible at these effigies, found throughout the world. And if PvP is something you'd like to avoid entirely, well, pick up the white cipher ring from the Twin Maiden Husks at the Round Table Hold. With this buff active, you'll automatically request help from another player when your world is invaded. And if you want to be the player that helps invaded players, then you can just use the blue cipher ring instead. Also in the Round Table Hold is Fear, the deathbed companion. Embrace her and you'll receive a Balderkin's blessing. Now, and it's kind of funny that not many people realize this, but did you know that your maximum health is reduced while you have this blessing in your inventory? 
Yeah, so this debuff icon means that you're losing about 5% of your health, and it's a debuff that remains until you fully use her Baldekin's blessing. And I don't blame people for not realizing this. The buff and debuff icons get pretty intense in Elden Ring. And as a side note, icons with a square around them are permanent effects from rings, and ones with diamonds around them are temporary. But the biggest question here is, is the Baldekin's blessing worth it? And the answer is, kind of? Sometimes, the Baldekin's Blessing essentially gives you a type of poise for about 15 seconds once it's consumed. This is extremely useful when you're facing a lot of minor enemies, as you'll completely ignore their small attacks and only get staggered by their strong attacks. However, the Blessing seems pretty pointless when you're facing a single enemy or any large enemy, so I'd honestly only recommend bothering with this mechanic if you know that extra poise will serve you well in an encounter to come like in a cave with lots of rats, or demi-humans, or flying projectiles. But the main reason to go back to Fear every now and then is because you'll eventually get a dialogue option for progressing her questline. For me, this always appears once I've moved into the Altus Plateau. Also, enjoy the cuddles, you know? Or don't. You can also just warp out of there if you think the animation is too long. Though things like this are why you're maidenless, you know? For number 14, have you ever found yourself disappointed with the amount of armors that you can alter? Well, you can actually expand your options by acquiring the gold sewing needle in Leonia, in a chest to the right when you enter the Church of Vows, located here. This lets you modify godly attire, so stuff like Renala's set, for example. Furthermore, if you've progressed Box Questline in Limgrave after talking to him here and here, then you'll eventually find him again in Leonia, at the East Raya Lucaria Gate. Here, Bok will perform your armor alterations for free, even taking the gold sewing needle from you, if you should so desire. And if you can't find him here, that means he's moved on to Lanedell. Finally, everyone knows about the whetstone knife at the gateside ruins that lets you apply Ashes of War, but did you know that there are also additional wet blades in the game? Finding these wet blades will unlock additional scaling options. The most accessible early game wet blades seem to be the Iron Wet Blade, which adds keen, heavy, or quality scaling and is located in Stormvale Castle, or the Glintstone Wet Blade, which adds magic scaling located in Raya Lucaria. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Special thanks to Absa, who helped me with a bunch of the research for this video. And again, check out our Secret Seekers Covenant and merch if you're interested. Subscribe for more Elden Ring content, and I'll see you next time.